Hi there, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about attaching ourselves to an anchor. And we have a variety of options for doing that, whether we're using something uh, that comes on our harness or something that's already tied into our harness. However we attach ourselves to the anchor, we want to think, is it efficient? Is it strong enough? Is it compact so it's not going to be cumbersome while we're climbing? Um, and is it uh, available easily? So do I have to spend a lot of time when I'm insecure in order to access it and then attach myself in? Cool, so the first option for attaching yourself to this anchor is using the rope. And this is my preferred option most of the time, unless the rope is gonna have to be detached from me at some point in time. For example, if I'm setting up a rappel, I may need to come out from this rope and thread it through the anchor. Um, so I might talk about some different ways of doing that. So in a multi-pitch context, especially, we might construct an anchor. And when you're constructing an anchor, you wanna make sure that it is unquestionably strong. Just a note on this, we're using a demonstration site that's a little farther away from people. This anchor, this block could be a little suspect. It wouldn't be my first choice if I had any others. But you're gonna create an anchor. And then to attach yourself in, um, a way that is easy to do is to use a, a walking carabiner. The shape of the carabiner doesn't matter to a great degree. Uh, but I like to use these um, attache carabiners that have the HMS or pear shape to them. I find that is nice when working with, especially if you have two ropes. And I'm just going to use a clove hitch to attach myself. And I'm not going to teach the clove hitch as part of this video. Um, you can check out our clove hitch video for seeing how to do that. But the reason I like to use the rope and the clove hitch is because it's quick, uh, it's efficient, um, and it's very adjustable and comfortable, right? So if I want to make this shorter, I simply grab, pull down, pull the other side, and now I'm shortened up. If this is uncomfortable and there's a big ledge below me, I simply pull on the other side until I get enough slack to step back down on that ledge. So that's my first option for attaching myself into the anchor would be use of the rope. Another way that I can use the rope to attach myself, let's say for instance, I've reached a chain anchor, right? And the chains are made for rappelling and the chains are hanging down here. Then without ad uh, adding anything extra, I can simply take another locking carabiner and then clove hitch in to this other strand that's coming down here. And the term that we commonly use for this strand, that is the non-tie-in strand, is the backside strand. So this is the backside of my clove hitch. And I'm gonna clip that in there. And just like the previous one, it's adjustable. So now I'm attached here, so I can untie from this one. And now if I've got chains that I need to thread to set up a rappel, I can then take this and put it through those chains, right? I could tie myself back in at that point to get lowered, right? Or if I'm actually setting up a rappel, I could pull this, right, through. Then I could start, um, after it's pulled through, put the knot in, then I may need to get out a personal anchor system or something like that to attach myself in order to finish setting up the rappel. Okay. In this case, I'm on a big ledge, so I'm not worried about falling off the mountain. So instead of going in direct with the rope, I just threaded the rappel and I set it all up. And now I'm just going to take a big knot by taking both strands together and making an overhand. Okay, so now I have an overhand knot in the system. And I can take my belay device, which has an extension already attached here. And I'm going to attach that belay device in. And then I'll clip that extension into my belay device. And as long as that knot remains in the system below it, now I'm effectively attached and that can be my tether as well. Um, so another really efficient way to use the rope to attach. And it is adjustable because I can determine how far away from the anchor I want to be by changing the position of this knot. Now, if I want to, I can belay directly off of this master point or I could belay off of my anchor up here, which is probably gonna be a little bit more comfortable, allow a little bit more throw when I'm pulling down on the brake strand. Okay, this is another example of how you can use the rope to anchor yourself and also your partner. So I'm belaying my partner off of my ATC in plaquette mode, where my partner can fall, and they're not gonna fall down the mountain, but yet I can pull down the brake strand. And once they get up close to me, 
you realize I'm just pulling a knot. <laughs> Here's my partner, okay, right here. So he can just lean back right there. And I'm going to attach my partner here. And again, take a look at our clove hitch video to see how to do this particular style of clove hitch. I'm gonna grab the rope in the front of the plate here, do an air clove, which means it's just the clove hitch is produced in the air and then I clip it in. Okay, so now I can cinch that up to where my partner is nice and comfortable. You good there, Mr. Knot? Okay, yeah, okay, great. So now I can remove my plate and now, Let's say that this is a rappel again here that I'm trying to set up. So I'm gonna to need to untie from my end of the rope or my partner would end up needing to untie, right? And so in a lot of circumstances, we would end up putting on our personal anchors. But in this case, I'm simply gonna find the backside of my partner's clove hitch, use the backside of my partner's clove hitch, okay, lock down. So I'm secured, my partner is secured, and now I can untie from this system. I can remove all unnecessary components of the anchor. You can still see clearly, right? That's me, and that's my partner. I'm attached to the backside of Mr. Knott's clove. And then I'm gonna take this end, and I'm gonna thread it through my rappel, right? So we can say that this is my rappel up here. I thread it all the way through. All right, let's say that's the middle. I'll tie my knot. There's that knot. And then I can use the method where I place the ATC on the rope, like so. Okay. And I can add the extension of my choice and clip into it, and then we're good to go. So a very efficient transition, minimizing the amount of time that we have to use an extension that's not the rope, which oftentimes maximizes comfort, especially if there's a ledge a little ways down from the anchor and it's not very comfortable to stand right up next to it. So the next way I'm gonna show how to attach to the anchor is using a double length runner. In this case, I'm using a double length nylon runner. The advantage of using nylon material is it's pretty resistant to abrasion and it has a slight dynamic property to it. It's pretty static, but it's much less static, meaning it can absorb more um, potential energy than say something like this, which the core of this is actually an aramid fiber, kind of uh, equivalent to Kevlar, or a lot of runners that you might have with you if you're doing um, some trad climbing are typically made of Dyneema, which is a hyperstatic material um, that won't absorb any energy. And there are some circumstances where you could fall onto an anchor um, and produce a lot of force. So having something that stretches a little bit is nice. So I'm just gonna take this, this is called the sew bar. I'm gonna take that sew bar, put it at one end, offset it in a couple centimeters or an inch or so, and then thread that through my harness, like so. Yeah. Just going right through the tie-in points. You could also do this through the belay loop, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, next I'm going to tie another overhand in here, just about there. And this overhand, you want to be roughly halfway or less than the distance here, the distance to the end here. And right where I've got it here, I kind of like. I'll show you why in a second. Okay, and now, this is going to be my attachment to the anchor. Okay, and I find that's a pretty good length a lot of the time, especially if I'm doing rappels. I don't want to be too far from the anchor because if this is really long, it makes it hard to thread the rappel. Remember I mentioned earlier that there are circumstances in which you risk falling and shock loading the anchor. That's one of the most common is if I have a long extension here and I have to step far up to reach my anchor in order to thread the rappel. If I slip off, I can fall down and shock load that piece of material. 
So that's one nice thing about nylon here. And one of the reasons I'm not using an extra long format. And then this little bite knot is where I can clip my ATC. Now, the reason I mentioned that it's good to have this roughly halfway or less is because that allows you, once you're set up on rappel, to clip this and have some slack in here so that when I get to the next rappel station, I can easily take this off and clip it into the next master point. If this knot were more than halfway up, it can make that transition very difficult. So now, similar setup, right? But our bite knot is more than halfway and clipped in. All right, okay. Get my DC on there. I set myself up on rappel. I clip this back in, I rappel, and now I get to the next station. When I get to the next station, this is being loaded right here and I'm still on rappel. So if it's really steep terrain, it can be really difficult to get this off of my belay loop in order to free it up and attach the next anchor. So the position of that bite knot that you make there, that overhand on a bite does matter some degree in order to maximize your comfort and make it more efficient to get off the mountain. Okay, so one other thing about this is one of the things I mentioned we should be looking for in all of our extensions is some versatility in terms of can they be adjusted. So I prefer to use this setup as, a, as opposed to a longer setup and the way that I'll make it adjustable is when I'm trad climbing I typically have 60 centimeter or shoulder length runners with me and if I need it longer because there's a good stance down here let's say and I can't reach. I will take a 60 centimeter runner, which has two non-locking carabiners on it, put those carabiners on here, opposite and opposed with the single length runner, and then I'll simply clip into that. And that'll allow me an additional 60 centimeters or just about two feet of extension away from my, um, my anchor point. And then the nice thing is the next anchor might not be, I might want it shorter. And all I do is I remove that 60 centimeter runner and then I'm back to having it short again. So it's still a little bit of adjustable, uh, a little adjustable using the short length. Okay, this next way I'm gonna show how to attach an anchor is probably the most common way to learn how to attach to an anchor from the beginning. And it involves using a pre-manufactured piece of material, oftentimes called a personal anchor. This is uh, Black Diamond's version, which I find very compact. It's made out of Dyneema, which again is a hyperstatic material. So it doesn't mean that you can't use these. It just means you need to be mindful not to shock load anchors by getting above them and slipping and falling down. And usually when I'm climbing, I have this kind of balled up the way that you saw, okay, on my, the back of my harness. And that is to make it compact and keep it out of my way. So it's not gonna get hung up on things. There are times where I might have it more permanently attached to my harness. And how I store it, to me, does matter a fair amount. So it can reduce the likelihood of getting snagged and causing problems on the gear. I usually clip these first two loops and I'll tuck that down and underneath my legs and then clip that up to the back of my harness on this back gear loop here. By keeping it there, if I'm going through a chimney, it's not getting grinded on right on the side of the wall. If I have gear on my loops on the side of my gear loops, then this is not getting accidentally clipped into those gear loops. So it keeps, keeps it out of the way. Okay. So there are circumstances where if I'm doing a lot of transitions, then I may have this permanently attached. But generally, I have this just bunched up on the back of my harness, keeping it out of the way entirely or in my backpack. And I only use it on the descent when I might need it for an extension for my rappel. Okay? So these are quite straightforward. They're obviously adjustable, but there's a little tip for you in how you can adjust these. So here it's full length. Right, so one way you can adjust these, and well, I find one of the easiest ways is to clip another locking carabiner into your belay loop and then just clip that up like that. And that keeps things nice and clean at the anchor as opposed to adding another locking carabiner at the anchor and getting this master point bound up with more carabiners. 
and it reduces hazard if you're using the same locking carabiner to shorten, right? Like if I was doing something like that at an exposed stance, opening up that carabiner and loading it again could be hazardous to me. Okay, this way of attaching yourself to the anchor involves using a quad length sling. So instead of 60 centimeters, you're looking at 240 centimeter runner here. And I'll oftentimes carry these instead of cordelettes if I'm in multi-pitch terrain. In alpine terrain where I might be going around horns and blocks and bigger things, I tend to carry cordelettes. But um, I find this works pretty well for most multi-pitch routes, even some alpine routes. So because this is Dyneema, I'm not a big fan of just having a single strand clipped into an anchor, although it's certainly strong enough for that. One of the nice things about a quad is you've got enough material that you can double it up. So I'm going to put the sew bar off to the side so it doesn't interfere with any of my girth hitches or knots. And so it's at one end and offset again by about one to two centimeters there. So now my sling is equalized and it's basically the length of a double length runner now. And now I'm going to treat it the same way that I did my double length runner. I'm going to thread it through my tie-in points. Good again. Also, you could go through your, your belay loop. You just don't want to permanently leave it attached to your belay loop, compressing that fabric, but repelling um, and then taking it off is not going to cause damage to the harness over time. That would be fine. Okay. Pull that tight. And then I'm going to do just like before. I'm going to make my bite knot pull it through okay. and now it's doubled up and I have a spot to clip in as well as this bite knot where I can clip my ATC and it's set up quite nicely it's about the right length a good spot to utilize on your body as a measurement tool for where this should go is I like this knot to be right about where my rib cage comes together. I believe that's called the xiphoid process there. So right about the xiphoid process. So this maybe is a little bit below that, but it's still within that realm. The top of that knot is right about my xiphoid process. Once you get this higher and higher and higher, if this is way above you, it gets more and more likely, especially if you have long hair or jewelry or anything going on up here, that it could get sucked into the device. Um, and that can get really difficult to manage in steep terrain, as you might imagine. So those are a few different ways that you could use to um, attach to the anchor.